Yes, you are about to watch the entire story of Chainsaw Man uncut and uncensored. Brace yourself for one of the wildest stories you'll ever experience, courtesy of the mastermind himself, Tatsuki Fujimoto. My name is DJ Miles, and I've been passionately covering Chainsaw Man on my channel for years. So if you can't wait for the anime to drop next month, well, look no further. Every arc from the beginning to the finale will be explained in this video. So sit back, relax, and dive into the world of part one of Chainsaw Man. Enjoy. This story begins with Denji talking to Pochita, his chainsaw pet. He calculates how much debt he has left and then goes to kill a tomato devil as part of his devil hunting job. The old man that hired Denji pays him, yet after paying his bills is left with almost nothing for food. The old man, a Yakuza member who hired Denji explains to his driver that they are making Denji work off his father's debt. The driver then offers 100 yen to Denji to eat his cigarette and Denji agrees, but as the driver leaves, he spits it out. Later at Denji's home, eating bread, he begins to tell Pochita how people normally eat bread with jam, yet he'll never experience this since he's stuck paying off his father's debt until the day he dies. In a flashback, we see a young Denji looking onwards to his father's grave. Here, he meets Pochita. Thinking the devil was planning to eat him, he discovered Pochita was actually injured, falling to the ground. He tells Pochita to bite his arm, knowing that devils can recover by consuming blood. Denji then offered a contract with Pochita, giving him his blood, but in exchange, helped Denji survive. Pochita agreed, and this is how Denji became a devil hunter. In the present, Denji still in bed tells Pochita how he wants to eat bread with jam and go out with the girl. The two begin to smile until Denji coughs blood, mentioning how his mother died from a heart condition and was also coughing blood. The old man came telling Denji he had a devil for him to kill as the two proceed to drive off. They arrive at an abandoned building where the old man tells Denji how grateful he is for his services, yet immediately backstabs him and Pochita. In order to become stronger, the Yakuza made a contract with the zombie devil, which turned the old man and his men into zombies. Under the zombie devil, he orders his slaves to kill Denji. Denji tries his best to outrun the zombies, but unfortunately gets mutilated, then thrown inside a dumpster. Inside the dumpster, some of Denji's blood gets gets into Pochita, making him recall a memory of Denji mentioning that he heard some devils can take over dead bodies and that if he dies, Pochita can take his body and fulfill his dreams. In the present, Pochita kills Denji and turns into his heart. Pochita tells Denji that he has always enjoyed listening to Denji speak about his dreams and forms a contract with him. In exchange for offering his heart, Denji must show Pochita his dreams. Denji emerges from the dumpster and notices Pochita's chainsaw cord on his chest. Startled by Denji's appearance, the zombie devil commands the zombies to eat him. Denji pulls a new cord coming out of his chest, turning into Chainsaw Man, ripping the zombies into pieces. As the events unfold in front of the zombie devil, Denji leaps into the air, killing the zombie devil. Denji then proceeds to kill every single one of the remaining zombies. Soon after that, three people wearing suits arrive at the warehouse as they notice an exhausted and bloody Denji stumbling towards them. After seeing Denji, the curious woman approaches him, realizing he's neither devil nor human. She asks him if he killed all the zombies, but Denji, barely standing, asks her to hold him. As she embraces Denji, he becomes human again. Denji learns she is a public safety devil hunter, tasked to kill the zombie devil. The woman offers Denji two choices, to be killed by her or becoming her pet and as a pet she would feed him. Hearing he would be getting bread with jam and other things for breakfast, Denji agrees. While riding in the car, Denji's stomach growls. The woman offers Denji to buy him food and since he's shirtless, she also gives him her coat. As they stop at some shop to eat, a man covered in blood runs towards the counter asking for help. He says his daughter had been kidnapped by a devil begging for help. The woman's food is ready and not wanting her udon to get soggy, she sends Denji to kill the devil. The woman reminds Denji that she doesn't need her pet refusing her commands. Denji runs off to the woods, annoyed that the woman treated him as a dog and remembers that Pochita is gone, causing him to feel upset. Denji hears some noise and sees a kid playing with the devil. As she notices Denji, she goes in front of the devil protecting it and begins telling Denji that the devil actually saved her from her abusive father. Conflicted, Denji says that there are several good devils and offers a solution for the girl to run off. However, as Denji lets his guard down, the devil grabs a hold of Denji, revealing to be the muscle devil. The muscle devil twists Denji's right arm as he begins to laugh diabolically in possession of the little girl. Denji pulls the cord on his chest with his mouth and turns into Chainsaw Man, saying that he can now kill him without feeling bad and proceeds to slice the muscle devil into pieces.
While carrying the child, Denji returns to the woman. Exhausted, he collapses onto her arms, feeling lightheaded from having lost too much blood as Chainsaw Man. When she asks him how he ended up in that situation, Denji explains that his pet devil became his heart. She tells Denji that he smells both human and devil, explaining that Pochita is still alive within Denji. He feels relieved, but still unable to eat his food due to exhaustion, the woman feeds him. When Denji asks the woman for her name, she says Makima. Then, he asks what kind of guy she likes, and she says, someone named Denji. Later, Makima takes Denji to Devil Hunter Tokyo HQ and explains about the public safety Devil Hunters. However, as she continues talking, Denji starts imagining his future with her. Makima gives Denji a uniform and introduces him to Aki Hayakawa and assigns him to Aki for the day. Denji starts to complain that he wants to work with Makima, but she tells him that if he does well, they will be able to work together as Aki drags him off. While patrolling, Denji asks Aki if Makima has a boyfriend. Aki then takes Denji to an alley corner and punches him in the face. He tells Denji to quit and explains that people who become devil hunters for weak reasons are the first ones to die and guesses correctly that Denji only became a devil hunter as he is interested in Makima. Aki spits a cigarette onto Denji's shirt and walks off until... As Denji hits Aki in between the legs, he explains that today was the first day he felt like a human and someone treated him to a meal and wants to keep living like that no matter how shallow the reason. Returning to HQ, Denji says Aki got attacked by a testicle devil, but Aki quickly calls out Denji's lie. They explain they don't get along, yet Makima decides to put them in Aki's experimental squad. She explains that Denji can turn into a devil and if he ever decides to quit or run off, he'll be eliminated as one. Later, Denji wonders if Makima is a good or bad person. Aki replies with the latter saying that he owes her his life. As he hears this, Denji remembers how Makima hugged him and mentions he wants to hug her again, surprising Aki. In the morning, Denji and Aki are revealed to be living together. Aki gets annoyed by the mess Denji leaves everywhere, but suddenly receives a call for an appearance of a fiend, and the two go to investigate. Heading towards the room with the fiend, Aki explains that a fiend is a devil that had taken over a dead body of a person. Aki kicks the door, discovering the fiend, mentioning that fiends possess the personality of their original devil forms. He commands Denji to turn into Chainsaw Man, but Denji decapitates and kills the devil with an axe. He tells Aki that his power looks painful and wanted to give the fiend a painless death. Aki he gets angry and shoves his hand into Denji's face and explains that fiends are devils too and he shouldn't sympathize with them. Since devils killed his family, he wants to kill them in the most suffering way possible. Denji replies if he has the option to be friends with devils, he will be. Hearing this, Aki walks out of the room. Denji then reveals in reality he didn't want to use his chainsaw powers to spray blood all over the adult magazines. He recalls Pochita's final words to him and confirms he's already living his dreams yet feels like he's missing something. Curious, he wonders if Makima also has has a dream and thinks of her, commenting on how he wants to touch some boobs. Denji then has an epiphany and realizes given his current situation, he would very much achieve what he was meant to do with his current life, his purpose, his goal, and that is to touch some fruit. Back at work, Makima informs the Denji that she'll be pairing him up with a friend of hers but warns him that she's a fiend. Power then makes her entrance announcing her name. Denji wonders if fiends can be devil hunters, but as he sees her chest, he quickly accepts it and gets excited to work with her. Denji and Power are out patrolling. Thirsting for blood, Power smacks Denji in the head, saying she needs to destroy something annoying him. Unable to find any devils, Power begins to boast, mentioning prior towards becoming a fiend, she was a fearsome devil that devils avoided from her mere scent. Requesting backup at Nerima Station. It's the sea cucumber devil. I smell blood. Excited from the smell, Power begins to run, preparing for battle. Power jumps down from the building and begins to form a hammer made out of blood. I did it! The glory is mine! As Makima arrives to the scene, she scolds both Denji and Power, telling Power she needs to think before she acts and Denji needs to keep her in line. We then learn about Power's former life as the Blood Devil, using blood as her weapon of choice. However, if her excitement gets to the better of her, Makima may have to let her go. Frightened, Power then points her finger at Denji, blaming him for her actions. She tells her to be quiet, further frightening Power. Makima doesn't care who is at fault, but expects big things from them. Later, Power notices is a cat and tells Denji she can only be friendly towards felines, saying hating humans is just instincts, but equally hates devils since they kidnapped her pet cat Meowie. She explains how Makima caught her before doing anything about Meowie, but implies she would do absolutely anything to get her back. Denji says he doesn't care for cats, but hints at the idea that he would do absolutely anything to touch some breasts. Power cuts him a deal. If Denji can rescue Meowie, she'll let him touch her boobs. Hearing that, Denji gets angry, appalled by the devil's actions for kidnapping Meowie, and decides to slaughter.
clear it. The rescue mission to save Miaoi begins. Power knows where they can locate the devil, but informs Denji that only he would be able to fight it, because if the devil sees her, she'll use Miaoi against her. Denji tells her about how he used to have a pet, which luckily resides within him. However, Power finds this sentiment foolish, confirming Pochita is dead, annoying Denji. Elsewhere, Makima reports to her higher-ups, who informs her that other nations are using devils for military purposes. They ask her about her experimental squad, in which Makima replies is full of potential. They conclude the meeting, reminding her to not become attached and to only use them for their intended purposes. Back in the car, Makima tells Aki how all devils are born with a name. The more that devil is feared, the more powerful the devil itself. For example, a coffee devil would be weak, but a car devil would be strong. She reveals that Denji can turn into a chainsaw devil. Although Aki finds this interesting, he mentions Denji's lack of conviction, not being fit to be in public safety. Elsewhere, Denji and Power finally arrive at a home on a small hill. As they get closer to the house, Denji wonders if Power should hide. Power slips up, confessing her story from earlier was fabricated. In that instant, Denji realizes something isn't right as he pulls out his axe, swinging it towards Power. Power knocks Denji unconscious and drags him towards the house. She hands Denji over to the Bat Devil, fulfilling their agreement. The Bat Devil grabs Denji, showing him his missing arm, and explains by consuming blood, he'll soon be able to heal. The Bat Devil smashes the roof to the house in search of more human blood to consume. Heavily injured, Denji recalls Aki's statement about befriending devils as Power looks onward, telling Denji how stupid he is for believing her story. The Bat Devil, looking afar at the nearest town, excited about his meal, is reminded by Power about their deal. However, as punishment for bringing disgusting blood, the Bat Devil decides to swallow Miaoi. In disbelief, seeing Miaoi eaten, Power turns to Denji and tells him how she can now relate, feeling sympathetic towards losing a pet. The Bat Devil then picks her up and swallows her too. Displeased on how she tastes, he spreads his wings, setting his sight towards a nearby town to consume the blood of children. He glances down and notices that Denji is clinging on his leg and drinks his blood. Despite crushing Denji's body, he pulls his cord and turns into Chainsaw Man, slicing the Bat Devil. Denji manages to cut the Bat Devil's arm off as they quickly collapse onto a building. Denji shouts at a bystander to run away before she is eaten. Confused, the Bat Devil asks why he would help a human escape when Denji is a devil himself. Denji responds to split him open and punches him. The Bat Devil quickly gets back on his feet, grabs a car, and tosses it towards Denji. At that moment, Denji realizes he can retract his chainsaws and catches the car. He throws the car back at the Bat Devil, hitting him in the face. The Bat Devil uses his sonar ability against Denji and sends him flying through a building. Chainsaw Man appears from the rubble, determined to cop a feel, frightening the Bat Devil. He tries punching Denji as Denji glides up the Bat Devil's arms with his chainsaws, slicing him in the process. Denji, covered in a pool of blood and guts, has rescued both Power and Miaoi. Power then asks Denji why did he save her. He responds by pointing towards her chest and makes a squeezing gesture, at which she remarks is a silly reason, but will allow him to anyway. Celebrating, Denji raises his arm until it's cut off by the Leech Devil, who appears before him. Worried, Denji asks Power if she's able to move, but is unable to. Denji decides to fight, but due to a lack of blood, is not able to transform into Chainsaw Man. The Leech Devil confronts Denji on killing her boyfriend, but upon a closer look, comments on Denji's attractiveness, allowing him to live, but will kill Power and Miaoi, upon which Denji prepares to battle the Leech Devil. The two begin battling with the Leech Devil easily overpowering Denji, surprised at how her boyfriend lost to such a weakling. She tells Denji the dream that the Bat Devil and she shared together, eating all of the humans despite it being impossible, yet was beautiful. Denji, adamant on remaining alive until he cops a feel, is further insulted by the Leech Devil, calling his dream ridiculous. Angered, Denji challenges the Leech Devil to a dream battle, meaning the person who wins the battle has a better dream. Denji manages to land an attack on the Leech Devil, but gets impaled through the stomach. The Leech Devil opens its mouth, preparing to devour Denji until... Aki arrives in time, summoning the Fox Devil, which bites the Leech Devil and eats it. Denji looks up and notices Aki arriving with a squad of Devil Hunters. Himeno is tasked to keep a watch on Devils while the newbies are tasked with evacuating survivors. Denji and Power are taken for medical treatment and questioning. Denji wakes up in a hospital bed and sees Aki. He tells him how his arm reattached via blood transfusion, but more importantly, learns how devil hunters combat devils by forming contract with other devils. Aki has a contract with the fox devil. In exchange for using the fox's powers, Aki offers him a part of his body. Finally, he tells Denji since there were no casualties during the incident, he'll decide to overlook the situation on the condition that Denji must obey Aki's commands. Denji agrees as Aki walks out of the room. Outside of the room, Power is seen wearing handcuffs with Himeno. Power claiming to be innocent to 
demands to be uncuffed, but Jimeno advises against it. Still, Aki frees power and says Devil Hunters should take advantage of every tool at their disposal, adding he has no intention on getting friendly with power. Later on. What a cramped home you have. Power barges into Aki's and Denji's apartment, shocking the two of them. Aki calls Makima, asking why, and she responds by saying she trusts him more than anyone, causing Aki to blush and agree. After the call, Power is seen, revolted by the vegetables in front of her, slinging them across the room. Soon after, several instances of Power being a horrible roommate are revealed, such as not flushing the toilet and refusing to shower. Annoyed, Denji is seen cleaning the bathroom until Power walks in. Power reminds Denji about their agreement, swiftly changing Denji's mood, even calling her an angel. Power tells Denji he gets three squeezes. Denji begins to squeeze. Okay, it's over. Denji is left speechless, but not in a good way, feeling disappointed and unfulfilled. The following day, Denji is seen doing paperwork with Makima, who notices something is off with him. Denji reveals he finally accomplished his dreams, but wonders if he was happier in the pursuit of the dream than actually attaining it. Makima then grabs Denji's arm, telling him naughty things feel better the more you know your partner. As she explains, she touches his hand, then makes him touch her ear, and proceeds to bite his fingers, and places his hand on her chest. Denji then blushes and falls down because wouldn't you? She asks Denji for a favor to defeat the all-powerful gun devil, concluding that if he can defeat it, she'll grant him any one wish. If Denji can defeat the gun devil, she'll grant him any one wish. She explains 13 years ago there was an increased use of guns globally to combat devils. However, gun violence became more rampant and fears of guns all around the world skyrocketed. A flashback is shown between two boys having a snowball fight. The older brother demands Tayo, the younger brother puts on a pair of gloves so that he won't catch a cold. Tayo happily runs into the house until... The house becomes instantly obliterated by the gun devil's blast. The flashback continues, showing the devastation the gun devil caused in several countries. In roughly five minutes, the gun devil has massacred over 1.2 million people. In the present, Makima explains how the gun devil has been missing since, and pieces of the gun devil's flesh has been scattered from the incident. These pieces, when consumed by devils, will enhance their strength. But more importantly, these pieces can reattach, and once they combine to a certain size, they will try to return to its original body to regenerate. We shift over to Aki and Himeno recovering a piece of the gun devil's flesh, where it's revealed the older brother in the flashback was Aki. Later, we see Aki alongside Denji and several other hunters tasked to hunt a powerful devil in Hotel Marin, who's rumored to have consumed a piece of the gun devil's flesh. As the group approaches the hotel, Arai expresses his distrust over Denji and Power for being devils. To ease the tension, Himeno promises to award anyone a kiss on the cheek for defeating the devil. Denji refuses, reciting Makima's conversation that naughty things feel better with someone you care about. Himeno playfully brushes off Denji's comments and whispers that if he can take down the devil, she'll offer him a f which excites Denji. As the group makes their way through the corridors of the hotel, Himeno senses the presence of a devil. The room door opens and what appears is a small demon as the group looks onward confused. The demon begins to glare towards Kobeni as he begins to jump at her but is locked in place thanks to Himeno. Power slices the devil in half as Himeno explains the demon was frozen in place thanks to the contract she's made with the ghost devil. In exchange for feeding it her right eye, she can use the ghost invisibility and strength as the group make their way upstairs. Arai notices something bizarre. Despite the group moving up towards the 9th floor, they strangely seem to arrive back on the 8th floor. Aki concludes this strange phenomenon must be coming from the devil's unspecified powers. It's at this point, Aki notes all the clocks in the rooms were stopped at 8.18, theorizing the floor is trapped in time making anyone coming to their aid impossible, causing the group to panic. Hours later, Aki reveals that he discovered the location of the devil, but rather than the small human form it took before, it has multiplied into a large grotesque monstrosity. The devil offers them a contract. In exchange for eating Denji, the devil will release the rest of the devil hunters from the hotel. Confused, the group looks at Denji, while Kobeni points a knife towards him, demanding to accept the contract. Kobeni charges towards Denji, but Aki kicks the knife away as Himeno elbows Kobeni to the stomach to knock her out. Aki attempts to summon the fox devil, but is unsuccessful from being cut outside from the real world. Himeno summons her ghost devil to attack the monster, landing direct hits, yet the more it cries in pain, the larger it becomes. The devil reveals to the group that its true body is hidden and isn't located on the 8th floor, offering the contract to them once more. Denji believes the devil is bluffing, but Himeno explains that contracts are unbreakable, meaning that if a devil does not honor their end of the bargain, they die. Aki suggests to Himeno that he should use the sword. But Jimeno refuses. 
Growing impatient, the devil tries attacking the hunters. It expands and grows stronger the more it's feared, revealing itself as the Eternity <laughs> Devil. Suddenly, the room begins to shift and tilt to one side, with the hunters looking downward onto the Eternity Devil, with its mouth wide open, seeking Denji's heart. As the Eternity Devil looms towards the group, Arai and Kobeni beg to offer Denji up to the monster. Aki is determined to use the sword to get them out, but Himeno restrains him with the Ghost Devil, explaining that using the weapon will massively shorten his lifespan. Apologizing, Arai tackles Denji as Kobeni seizes the moment to strike, but Aki protects Denji, getting stabbed instead. Aki explains that despite the animosity he feels towards Denji, he's going to need all the allies he can get to face the gun devil. Shocked, Denji instructs Power to stop the bleeding with her abilities. Power says that she can only control her blood freely, but will try her best to aid Aki. Himeno finally begins to crack under pressure, worried about Aki's life. Frustrated, Denji finally offers himself to the Eternity Devil on behalf of the group, but isn't going down without a fight. Denji comments that although the Eternity Devil isn't vulnerable, it still feels pain. Therefore, Denji plans to torment it until it wants to die and commit suicide. Denji leaps into the jaw of the Eternity Devil, devoured by the monster. Until... Denji explodes out of its mouth in its chainsaw form. He begins slicing the devil repeatedly, but the Eternity Devil tells Denji that it's useless. Power comments that Denji is losing blood fast, and if he loses too much, his chainsaws will retract. <laughs> The Eternity Devil continues biting into Denji. His chainsaws begin to retract due to losing too much blood. Denji retaliates by biting back into the Devil, regaining his chainsaws. The brutal battle wages on. Both opponents deal heavy damage to each other until Denji collapses of exhaustion as the Devil celebrates. Himeno summons the Ghost Devil to pull on Denji's cord, reawakening him. Denji suddenly realizes that by drinking the Devil's blood, he can recover his wounds and stamina, meaning he can continue attacking it without end. Three days later, the Eternity Devil, shattered and torn to pieces, begins apologizing to Denji, revealing its heart, begging him to kill it and end its suffering. The group exits the hotel bloodied and exhausted. Denji is happy to have recovered a piece of the gun devil's flesh, but collapses right away. Later, at a restaurant, the entire devil hunter squad are seen happily celebrating. Denji is seen looking agitated, unable to read the menu before remembering the promise Himeno made about that French kiss. Himeno tells Denji she needs to be more intoxicated because she's too shy to do it sober. Suddenly, Makima arrives surprising Denji. Denji is now in a bind. He really wants to kiss Himeno, but he doesn't want Makima to see, yet remains adamant on French kissing Himeno. He decides to steer the conversation, telling Makima he's acquired a piece of the gun devil's flesh. Aki questions Makima's interest in Denji. However, she casually tells Aki she'll reveal everything about Denji if he can outdrink her. Aki and Himeno are seen passed out as Makima strangely seems unaffected by alcohol. Denji notices Himeno from behind. She grabs his face and begins to passionately kiss him. Denji is concerned by Makima watching the events unfold, but begins to immerse himself in the moment, adding how warm Himeno's tongue is. It's soft. So soft, in fact, that he she had vomited in his mouth. The next day, Makima is seen boarding a train alongside a devil hunter for her Kyoto business trip. She reminisces about the night before, until... A group of passengers nearby them suddenly pulls out guns and shoot them both dead. With Makima taken out of the story, who exactly is trying to assassinate Denji? In a ramen shop, Denji, Himeno, Aki, and Power all eat. A stranger on the next table says out loud how his beloved grandfather would spoil him with expensive meals and gifts. He reveals that his grandfather was the old Yakuza, possessed by the zombie devil. He accuses Denji of his death before stating, The gun devil wants your heart, and shoots Denji in the head before shooting Aki in the arm and Himeno in the chest. Power dashes towards the man and punches him in the face. She shouts at Aki, who summons the fox devil, to devour the man, destroying the ramen shop building. The fox devil comments how the man he consumed isn't a human or a devil before it's torn apart from the inside. The man re-emerges, revealing to be a devil-human hybrid fused with the katana man. As the smoke clears, Aki unsheaths his sword, which Power notices resembles a nail more than a blade. Katana man swings, but Aki swiftly dodges the attack. Aki shouts fire as an ominous off-panel devil is shown flicking the nail's point into the katana man. A ghostly mouth discreetly says the number three as a wounded katana man hesitates to attack Aki. Despite another attack, Aki dodges again and shouts fire. He strikes the man two more times as the mouth counts down to two and one.
Katana Man knocks Aki back, but calls out the curse to finish it as the mouth counts down to zero. A bodiless hand emerges, grabbing Katana Man. Shocked, his entire body gets torn to shreds as a giant skeletal body appears, revealing to be the cursed devil. He collapses on the floor, surrounded by a pool of blood. Suddenly, a young woman comments on the power of the cursed devil as she walks towards the Katana Man. Salatari Akane, the girl who helps Katana Man, orders him to kill Aki. Katana Man prepares to strike and appears in front of Aki, unaware of his presence until Aki's chest is revealed to have been cut open by the katanas. Aki falls to the ground, heavily injured from the attack. Akane tells Katana Man to finish him as Himeno tells Power to forget about her and protect Aki, but refuses, admitting being far outmatched. Himeno attempts to summon the Ghost Devil, but declines, frightened by Akane. As a last resort to save Aki, Himeno offers her life as tribute to the Ghost Devil. The trepidatious Ghost Devil begins to smile, fully emerging in its true monstrous form, looming over Katana Man. The Ghost Devil attacks Katana Man, and with each attack, Himeno is seen losing more of her body. Overwhelmed by the barrage of attacks, Katana Man asks Akane for assistance. In that moment, Akane summons the Snake Devil, swallowing the Ghost Devil, leaving only Himeno's clothes behind. However, the Ghost Devil's dying hand is seen pulling out the Denji's cord, reawakening him and transforming into Chainsaw Man. Denji excitedly charges at Katana Man as the two begin to battle. As the ferocious battle wages on, two men carrying guns appear to assist Katana Man and begin shooting at Denji. Although shot, he beats the two gunmen and takes one hostage. Enraged, Katana Man lunges down for an attack and slices both of them in half at a speed Denji was unable to detect. Picking up Denji's torso, he orders the other gunmen to get a car to escape. We're then shown a scene of Arai, Himeno, Makima, and other several hunters dead. In Makima's train carriage, the assassins intend to appear like civilians. However, Makima strangely has survived and blocks their path. At the station, two hunters, Tendo and Karus, are seen waiting. Both are shocked to see Makima alive, casually stepping out of the train towards them after learning about her death just minutes ago. Makima informs them of the attack, but tells them she wasn't hit, while the train assassins are shown with gaping holes in their chest. Later, Makima theorizes the gun agents are pursuing Denji. Karus and Tendo are ordered to find her a shrine with a high elevation and 30 criminals with life sentences, plus a change of clothes. The two gun agents begin to move Denji into the van, until one of them begins to sweat nervously. In an instant, he is flattened by an invisible force, horrifying everybody. Atop a shrine, Makima is located performing a ritual. The 30 prisoners Makima asked for are blindfolded along with Tendo and Karus. Tendo informs Karus, Makima's contract with her devil is highly classified information, which is why they must remain blindfolded. Makima orders one of the prisoners to recite a name, and after he does, the gun agent with the same name begins to flatten and explode. The prisoner then falls down as Makima instructs the following prisoner to do the same for the next gun agent and so forth. Multiple explosions play out until Makima stops, leaving Akane shocked. Makima instructs Karus and Tendo to remove their blindfolds, informing them she's done all she can from their current location as Akane and Katana Man narrowly escape. The next day, Aki reawakens at a hospital, mourning over Himeno's death. Outside the room, Denji looks through the window and wonders why Himeno's death has not caused him any real sadness. This leads him to wonder whether giving his heart to a devil did really rob him of a humanity. Regardless, Denji and Power are instructed to meet up with Makima. Makima informs the duo that the latest enemy attack are targeting Denji and therefore has requested a training course for the two of them. She introduces them to Kishibe, who asks Makima to leave. He then takes a step forward and puts his arm around the two of them, stating their training has begun before calmly choking the two of them out. He drops both on the floor and analyzes how their body can recover by consuming blood. Kashibe explains that he's the strongest devil hunter around and until the two of them are able to defeat him, they will train daily. Meanwhile, Karus and Tendo are seen with Aki who's struggling to summon the fox devil. Karus remarks the fox devil is angry that he was summoned recklessly by Aki and is likely to never respond to him again. In addition, the heavy price of shortening his lifespan with the cursed devil now hinders Aki's usefulness as a devil hunter. They suggest that if he doesn't intend to quit public safety, he'll have to make another contract with an even more powerful devil to continue working. That night, Karus and Tendo are seen taking Aki to the Bureau's devil holding facility. Here, the most powerful devils captured alive by public safety are brought to this location where Karus reveals they intend for Aki to make a contract with the future devil. Aki walks into the cellar, noticing an eyeball staring towards him. The future devil emerges, a humanoid, <laughs> tree-like figure, repeating the phrase, The future rules. The future rules. Aki states his intention of making a contract, but the mm -hmm. devil requests the details of the contract will depend on Aki's future, and in order to read Aki's future, he asks that he sticks his face into its belly. Mm -hmm. 
Aki complies and the devil begins to giggle <laughs> profusely. It states the terms of the contract and simply asks Aki to allow it to live in its right eye. Aki is shocked by the easiness of the request, but the devil ridicules him, saying he wants to witness Aki's future with its own eyes as he will die in the worst possible way. <laughs> Meanwhile, Denji and Power lay beaten on the ground. Kishibe congratulates the two on their improvement. However, their first real assignment begins tomorrow. Special Division 4 will be tasked to take down Akane and Katana Man. If they fail, Kishibe will be forced to kill them both. Elsewhere, in an office building, Katana Man is seen with several gun agents. He promises that the next time he encounters Denji, he'll rip out his heart. Akane reassures the group of their victory by revealing their ultimate weapon, a horde of zombies left by the zombie devil. The Bureau's special forces prepared to storm the gun agent's building with the zombies lying in wait. Kishibe speaks with the police officer responsible for locking down the building. He provides details about the special Division 4 agents inside. The shark fiend beam is discovered, devouring zombies. He can swim in any surface walls and grounds and can fully manifest as a shark for short periods of time. The violence fiend, despite being a fiend, is very formidable. He's required to wear a poison dispensing mask to forcibly weaken him. The spider devil is seen striking numerous zombies with their multiple legs. Then there's the angel devil. One touch by the angel devil and your lifespan will be siphoned off. While the group handles the zombies, Aki makes his way up the stairs alone to confront Akane. She summons the snake devil to release the ghost devil, which is now subservient to her. The ghost devil begins to attack, but through the power of the future <laughs> devil's future sight, Aki is able to deflect and counter most attacks. Despite this, he's overwhelmed by the many arms of the ghost devil and is soon strangled by the monster. Aki recalls an early meeting with Himeno in which she offered him a cigarette. When she realizes he was underage, however, she takes it back and promises to give it back to calm himself. In the present, Aki looks up having been released from the ghost devil's grasp. One of the ghost devil's arm reaches out to Aki, unveiling a cigarette reading Easy Revenge written across it. Taking a deep breath, reflecting on Jimeno's advice, he realizes that the ghost devil is blind and senses its surroundings through fear. Remaining calm, Aki walks on top of the ghost devil, promising he'll join Jimeno soon and decapitates the devil. A stunned Akane prepares to summon her snake devil, but is stopped by Kobeni, holding a knife to her throat. Aki asks Kobeni why she decided to remain working with public safety, in which she awkwardly responds, their upcoming bonuses are soon to arrive. Elsewhere, Denji and Power arrive to the hideout in an elevator. They arrive on the floor, revealing a swarm of zombies. Denji recommends they remain quiet, until Power proudly yells her name out loud, alarming them. Power laughs, claiming to be the strongest of them all, as Denji, looking dumbfounded, proceeds to ride up the elevator alone. As Denji arrives on a higher floor, he confronts Katana Man, but rather than a fight, Katana Man begins to ask him a few questions. One being if Denji felt guilty for killing his grandfather. He responds and tells him he killed them because they turned into zombies, but Katana Man calls him a liar. Katana Man then tells Denji that despite replacing his physical heart with the Katana Devil, even he feels remorseful when murdering zombies, alluding to Denji being the only human devil hybrid without a conscious. Denji taunts him as the two combatants begin to transform, crashing through a wall together. Chainsaws clashing with Katana Blades in combat. Battling mid-air, the two of them eventually comes crashing down onto a moving train. While most of the passengers quickly move out of the way, Denji encounters an injured woman lying on the floor. Without hesitation, Katana Man strikes Denji, defending himself and the woman, but loses an arm in the process. The woman runs off as Denji angrily shouts that Katana Man should ban his signature move. Katana Man strikes once more as Denji loses his second arm. He demands that Denji should give up and apologize for killing his grandfather, but Denji declares he can still fight back as long as he has a chainsaw on his head. They clash for a third time. The chainsaw on Denji's head shatters, but it was used as a distraction. Nani? Katana Man is split open. His anger blinded him from noticing Denji's third chainsaw emerging from his leg. Later, Makima reports the events to the Bureau. They ask Makima why Akane wanted Denji's heart, but responds the Snake Devil killed her before they could question her, theorizing the involuntary suicide was a contract made with the Gun Devil. However, they managed to seize over 1.4 kilos of the Gun Devil's flesh from within the building, meaning they have collected large enough pieces for them to track down the Gun Devil's location. That night, Denji wakes up in a cold sweat, with Aki and Power napping besides him. He notices Power has grown several new horns, but responds by punching him for alarming her. However, she looks at her fist, amazed at her newfound strength. Later, Makima concludes that Power drank too much blood battling the swarm of zombies, and whenever she consumes too much blood, her power increases. Nervously sweating, Power is taken away by Makima in order to drain her blood to temper her strength. However, Makima comments that Denji should still be paired with someone. Beam surfaces from below and cheerfully embraces Denji as his new partner. Makima says Beam will gladly do anything that Denji requests of him, with Beam promising the same. Nevertheless, Makima notices Denji looking upset and offers to go out on a date with him. Yahoo! 
The next day, the two arrive at the cinemas, with Makima suggesting for the entire day they will movie hop watching several films. The first two films don't emotionally resonate with the pair. The final film, however, shows Denji crying over a trivial scene. Makima too is crying. The two leave the cinemas in a cheerful mood, talking about how much they enjoy the last film. Denji questions Makima if she thinks he has a heart. Makima leans in to listen to his heartbeat, causing him to blush and tells him that he does before walking off. Denji walks down the street, thinking about Makima and how her words calmed his pent up worries. He thinks about how she will be the only girl he will be romantically interested in. Suddenly, it begins raining as Denji runs for cover. Hiding in a telephone booth, Denji tries to wait out the storm. He is surprised by the sudden appearance of a young woman. Hello? As the rain stops, she invites him to the cafe she works in. The girl sits next to him, ordering a pair of coffees for them both, which Denji drinks with a disgusted frown. <laughs> She laughs and flirtatiously touches his shoulder as a flustered Denji wonders whether she likes him. The girl introduces herself as Reze. Days later, Denji returns to the cafe. As he enters, Reze remarks that he's eaten there every day that week. She invites him over to her table, but Denji mentions he's unable to read. When he reveals he can only write balls, she laughs. He states his desire to learn how to read, with Reze moving closer and inviting him to attend night school with her. That night, Denji and Reze walk through the empty school. Sat in a classroom, Reze pretends to teach Denji simple nonsensical facts such as 1 plus 1 equals 2. Reze comments on Denji's lack of education, asking whether his life as a devil hunter is truly worthwhile for him. Denji says his job provides him with 3 square meals and a bed, but Reze reminds him that's the bare minimum acceptable living conditions. Reze notices Denji's discomfort and suggests they take a swim. <laughs> By the outdoor pool, Reze strips naked. Denji admits he can't swim but gets naked anyway despite his internal worries about Makima. <laughs> Even though he's a bit nervous, Denji eventually jumps in as Reze starts to teach him how to swim. It begins raining and the two return indoors. As they sit inside and watch the rain, Reze invites him to a food festival taking place the next day before leaving to use the bathroom. As she walks the hallway alone, Reze is approached by a strange man wielding a knife. Reze is chased outside by the man on top of a rooftop. When she asks what he wants, he simply responds to torture and control Denji. And to achieve that, he will gouge out her eyes and peel her face off. The moment he lunges at her, she dodges his attack, swings onto his back, and chokes him with barely any effort. As he slowly dies, she sings a lullaby in Russian. Reze gets up and soon after discovers the storm is caused by none other than the Typhoon Devil. The Devil apologizes to her calling her Miss Reze as she promises to overlook the incident in exchange for obeying her commands. The next day, Denji and Reze attend the festival. After an eventful day together, they climb atop a hill to view fireworks in the evening. As Reze turns to him, she tells him that she'll make him happy and protect him if he quits devil hunting. Conflicted, Denji asks why Reze wants to run away with him. She responds she likes him. Denji admits he's tempted but he explains he's becoming happier with his current position with the bureau when he asks if he can still see her despite this she asks if he likes anyone else before kissing him after a few moments denji falls backwards and it's revealed reze bites off his tongue Denji attempts to pull his cord, but Reze swiftly slices off his hand before he can. Reze kneels close and kisses him again, before apologizing and calmly telling him she wants his heart until Beam bursts from the floor and grabs Denji, fleeing with him down the hill. Embarrassed by his failure to recognize Reze's scent earlier, Beam was reminded that it smelled like that of a bomb. Reze pulls a pin out of her choker and her head and right arm explode, revealing to be the bomb devil hybrid. Holding Denji tightly, Beam attempts to escape from Reze. However, she uses powerful explosions to launch herself in front of him and blocks his path. Beam growls and transforms into a giant shark-headed creature. Time to get serious. Never mind. With little effort, Reze touches his face, hitting him with an explosion and knocking him down. A trio of private devil hunters appear and report the situation over a walkie-talkie. Snapping her fingers, Reze explodes the three of them before turning back and noticing Beam has fled with Denji. At a nearby division training facility, Aki spars with some hunters until he's interrupted by a heavily injured Beam clutching Denji's tattered body. Beam reveals the bomb devil is the gun devil's partner and that the bomb hybrid is coming. At that moment, Reze arrives at the facility, pulls the pin out of her choke and begins assaulting everyone there. She easily takes down every devil hunter she encounters. 
Meanwhile, Aki prepares to drive Angel Devil and the unconscious Denji and Beam away from the building. Before the car can start, Reze appears in front of the vehicle with the severed heads of two Devil Hunters. Attempting to escape, Aki starts the car and swerves around her. As Reze jumps on top of the car, she attempts to smash her way to Denji, but she is ambushed and knocked back with a kick from the Violence Fiend. The Fiend kicks at Reze again, however, she is able to block his attack, much to its surprise. Violent Fiend, realizing how much weaker he is, retreats as Reze confused, leaves the scene to find Aki and the rest of the gang. Aggressively blasting her way towards Aki and the gang, she lands on a large truck immediately behind them as Denji awakens from his daze with a gasp. Aki tells the group that their main goal is keeping Denji away from her, but Denji transforms and cuts his way through the car towards her as Aki warns him about his lack of blood. Angry, Denji tells Reze that every woman he has ever met has tried to kill him, asking why so many are interested in the chainsaw's heart but not his. Reze tells him her feelings for him were real, making Denji hesitate. Yet, Aki tells him to not be so gullible as Denji comments that he doesn't need Reze anymore since he has Makima. Denji yells that he doesn't want Reze's death on his conscience and plans to capture her as he launches himself at her. Denji gets punched by Reze and is flung back. Reze chastises him and says he needs to use his powers more effectively. Proving her point, Reze reveals that she let Denji slice off one of her fingers, which is now stuck on Denji's chains, and causes the severed finger to explode. Denji leaps out and attacks. However, Reze's reflexes are too quick, and she blasts the pair into the air. Moving through the air, Reze's leg transforms into a missile, launching them back into the ground and tearing Denji's body apart. She then picks up Denji's severed torso and blasts it, rendering it into a smoldering mass. As Reze walks through the ruined building, Aki sneaks up on her and slices off her arm, causing her to drop Denji. After seeing a vision from the future devil, Aki moves back and begins to dodge Reze's attacks. In retaliation, Reze transforms her arm into a missile and hits the ground, causing a massive explosion. As Aki is knocked back by her blast, we see the violence fiend arrive, pulling him out of harm's way. As the two look to Reze, she pauses and asks for a timeout, commenting that a two against one fight is unfair. Reze reveals her hesitation was merely a ploy as a now monstrously massive Typhoon Devil crashes through a nearby building, offering to enter the fight. Nearby, Angel Devil moves through the rubble, absorbing the life force of a dying victim, offering their blood to restore Denji's strength. Beam advises Denji to use his chainsaws more effectively to move more quickly by wrapping the chains around objects and swinging from building to building. Getting excited about expanding his power, Denji orders Beam to turn into a shark. Denji jumps onto Beam's back and uses the chainsaw chains as reins, hoping to ride him like a horse. Denji and Beam charge towards the fight. Moving in, Denji is able to slice off Reze's leg. The Typhoon Devil gives her blood, healing her. Both Denji and Reze express excitement as to the insanity of the conflict. Denji is able to easily rip the Typhoon Devil to shreds. Losing sight of Reze, she attacks the pair from above, blasting Denji and Beam into the ground. Beam appeared to have taken the brunt of the blast as Denji crawled out of his mouth. Reze and Denji face off on a rooftop as she asks him to give up. She remarks that he has nowhere else to run, to which Denji responds that the ocean is directly behind them, reminding her that she taught him how to swim. Reze flicks another blast at his other arm, but it's revealed that Denji managed to keep the arm attached to his torso by placing a chain between his shoulder and forearm. Using the chains to tie Reze up, he leaps into the ocean. Reze, being unable to explode while wet, sinks to the bottom with Denji. The next morning, in her human form, Reze is seen lying next to Denji in an unconscious beam on a nearby beach. When she asks him why he saved her, he tells her that he did it for his own happiness and allowing her to be captured or killed would haunt him. She reminds him that she could still easily kill him, to which she playfully responds, if I'm going to die, at least let it be at the hands of a beautiful woman. <laughs> Reze starts to laugh, telling him every flirtatious gesture she made was part of her plan, but Denji still wants to go on the run with her. Denji tells her that he likes her sincerely, and that even if all of her comments were lies, she still taught him to swim, implying some sort of affection between them. Reze moves closer to him, before snapping his neck, but not before Denji calls out, inviting her to the cafe at noon if she changes her mind. Instead of fleeing from town, Reze begins to walk to the cafe that Denji is at, smiling with anticipation. However, suddenly a mob of mice run by her feet as Makima reveals herself. Reze nervously moves to pull the pin in her neck, however, her arm is instantly sliced off. She quickly attempts moving in towards Makima with a knife, but is impaled by a spear thrown from a rooftop by Angel Devil. As Reze slowly bleeds out, Makima takes her hand. Looking to the cafe, Reze thinks of Denji one final time. As it turns out, she really did care for Denji. 
Inside the cafe, Denji holds a bouquet of flowers satin. The owner speaks to him promising that another girl will eventually come along who is perfect for him. As he says this, Power walks in thinking the bouquet Denji was holding is for her and demands that he hands her the flowers. And as the two look at each other, Denji quickly shoves them into his mouth, smiling. Denji has another nightmare of standing in front of the door, hearing Pochita order him to never open it. The next morning at breakfast, Denji sits despondently thinking of Reze and how his heart was truly and irreversibly broken by her. However, when Makima later invites them all on a paid vacation with her, Denji jumps with joy. As they discuss the timing of the trip, a swarm of devil hunters enter the room to discuss with Makima. Terror! Chainsaw Devil! Is he an enemy or an ally? With the Bureau failing to censor the broadcast of Denji's battle with Reze, the existence of Chainsaw Man had been revealed to the world. As a result, Denji will be placed under heavy surveillance in order to avoid assassination by foreign threats. Meanwhile in America, a trio of part-time devil hunters sit and discuss their new job, killing Denji and returning his body to the US in exchange for $2 million. The youngest man, Aldo, expresses fear of dying, however, is talked down by the other two, reminding him that the three of them, all brothers, survived the gun devil's onslaught. As they prepare to leave for Japan, the leader Sato refers to themselves as immortal. Elsewhere in a forest, a woman and a young man, Tolka, hunt a fox. As he shoots the fox, the woman asks if he felt like he'd taken the fox's life, and the man explains he did not. As he cooks and serves the fox to the woman, she asks Tolka once more if he'd feel like he had taken the fox's life, and he again denies it. The woman then explains that they will go to Japan and do the same to a 16-year-old boy, Denji. Tolka, referring to the woman as master, agrees. Meanwhile in China, a woman, Quan Chi, and her harem are acting like a bunch of degenerates. As they finish, a man arrives requesting her to take the job of capturing Denji. As a reward, she can ask for any wish. Elsewhere in Germany, a government agent approaches an old man on a bench and informs him of the mission to hunt Denji. What's the reward? The government then asks what he wants. I want to adopt four good-looking children. Three to use for contracts. One for pleasure. The next day at a park, Denji and Power eat snacks. Aki and Angel arrive soon after along with several new devil hunters who will be protecting Denji. Kusakabe, Yoshida, and Tamaoki. Elsewhere, devil hunters Tendo Karus question why they simply cannot hide Denji in his human form. Subaru explains that the other devils can smell him. As they drive to meet the main group, a set of road spikes are thrown in front of the vehicle. The three American brothers outside the car shoot the three hunters dead. Sato laughs at the incident before changing his face to match Karusa's. The three then discuss Karusa's voice as Sato shifts his tone and accent to match it. Later, the main group all the way to Burger Restaurant as Denji and Power eat. Denji forces vegetables into Power's mouth. As she begins to sweat, choking down her own vomit, the woman from the forest walks past the table. What did you do to the target just now? The woman sits at a table with Tolka, revealing she stabbed Denji three times in order to invoke the Cursed Devil and that only one more poke is required. She entrusts the final poke to Tolka. Elsewhere, Kobeni and Violent Fiend are outside patrolling the area before suddenly a car pulls up beside them. As Sato, disguised as Karus, gets out. He yells at the two to report Tendo and Subaru's death. Aki speaks with the brother disguised as Karus, asking him to reconsider his place on the mission but claims he wishes to avenge the death of Tendo and Subaru. As they continue talking, Power is distracted by Kobeni's car. Power gleefully gets inside the vehicle. Sato then introduces himself to Denji as the two shake hands. Power rams the vehicle onto both Denji and Sato, shocking the group. Kusakabe suddenly calls out Sato's disguise slip away, revealing his identity. Tamaoki recognizes him, warning the others of his contract with the Skin Devil, and that the likelihood of his brothers being nearby. Two civilians are shown to be watching the scene in horror. As they move to an alleyway, it is revealed they were Joey and Aldo in disguise. Aldo vomits as Joey attempts to collect himself and come up with a plan. However, he is suddenly pulled around a corner by an unseen figure. Aldo quickly redisguises himself as Yoshida walks around the corner, having swiftly executed Joey. Noting Aldo's vomit, Yoshida quietly mutters, <laughs> Guess a pro wouldn't puke, and writes him off as an innocent bystander and leaves. The next day, in a crowded street in Japan, Santa Claus is seen touching a passerby on the shoulder. The person then grabs a passerby next to them, and so forth, until the entire street has been converted into doll-like creatures. Throughout the cities, the four main parties, Toka and the woman, Aldo, Santa Claus, and Quan Chi all prepare to begin hunting Denji. The battle between the international assassins is about to begin.
at a department store, Santa Claus watches Denji and the others through a window. From a distance, he commands his dolls to attack the group. However, as they enter through the door, Kusakabe is revealed crouching inside of a ritual circle. Using the power of the Stone Devil, he petrifies the dolls. Yoshida explains the power of the Doll Devil, stating that if they touch any part of a person, including clothes, they will be transformed into a subservient doll. Suddenly, a swarm of dolls burst through the window, charging towards the group. As they run to the second floor to escape, Tamaoki explains that there were hunters stationed in every building in the street and that the mission's true purpose was to hunt the assassin creating the dolls, Santa Claus. Outside, a group of devil hunters appear, preparing to aid the main group inside the department store. However, they are halted by the appearance of Quan Chi and her hero. As they prepare to attack the girls, Quan Chi pulls out the sword and dashes forward, making her way to the second floor of the building in a near instant. Blitzing her way with extraordinary agility, she has decapitated everyone with her blade. At the last second, Aki saves Angel Devil. However, the two are knocked back from the attack as Quan Chi sets her sight on Denji in power. In a flash, she kicks Denji into the air before knocking out Kusakabe and Tamaoki. Suddenly, Kishibe enters, having taken Long and Pink's the hostage. He orders Denji in power to restrain the hostages while he sits down with Quan Chi, who are revealed to be past acquaintances to discuss the situation. As he speaks, he holds up a note in a notepad that reveal Makima's listening to them. Through his notepad, he promises to give Quan Chi freedom in return for helping to kill Makima. Quan Chi refuses. At the same moment, Aldo enters the room and shoots at Denji. Kishibe kicks Denji, causing the attack to miss. However, Long is able to make the opportunity to grapple him and free herself. In a flash, both Quan Chi and Kishibe move at each other's throats. After a few strikes, Quan Chi is able to throw Kishibe out of the window but slows his fall by sliding down the building's exterior and falling atop Kobeni's car. Aldo continues to fire his weapon, however, Quan Chi grabs him and throws him through a window, yet manages to land on Kobeni's car. Amidst the chaos, Beam emerges from the floor, knocking back Long and freeing Denji from her grasp. As the two manage to escape, Denji accidentally stands on Tolka's nail and is suddenly whisked into the air. As they both react with shocking confusion, Denji is ripped apart by the Curse Devil before Tolka appears and kicks Beam to the ground, knocking him unconscious. Toka's master appears congratulating him. The woman then begins to explain the secret to making a perfect doll by gathering the trust, respect, worship, and pity of an individual before converting them. With that, she transforms him, revealing that she is the real Santa Claus and that the elderly man is merely another perfect doll controlled by her. Suddenly from outside, Santa Claus sacrifices the elderly man and the three children he was promised to the hell devil in return for sending every living person within the building to hell. Then, from above the sky, a giant six-fingered hand reaches down and seemingly crushes the building. Those who were inside the building suddenly appear in a large grassy field, with the sky completely covered in thousands of various doors. Hell. Quan Chi requests the truce amongst the various parties while they try to decipher their current situation. She turns and notes that all of the fiends are suffering from nervous breakdowns. Pinksy frighteningly explains that they are being watched by devils with power far greater than that of the gun devil, the primal fears whom have never died. One of the doors open and a black drop of liquid falls out and hits the ground. In an instant, the Darkness Devil moves past them, having detached all of their arms from their bodies. Toka, now fully under Santa Claus control, offers the Darkness Devil Denji's heart in return for the power to kill Makima. Outside of Hell, Santa Claus receives a small fragment of the Darkness Devil's flesh and swallows it whole. As the Darkness Devil accepts Santa Claus's deal, it picks up Toka and decapitates him. Kusakabe attempts to utilize the Stone Devil's powers to fight. However, the Darkness Devil merely grabs the Stone Devil and crushes it, killing Kusakabe. During this, Beam uses blood from his severed arms and revives Denji. However, he gets split into pieces by the Darkness Devil. Quan Chi and Tamaoki prepare to attack, however, are also <laughs> eviscerated alongside Power, Long, and Pinksty. Removing his mask, the Violence Fiend attacks with a kick. However, before he can hit the Darkness Devil, it speaks in an unknown language, and his body is blasted with holes. Denji lunges to attack. However, before he can make contact, his bones are all snapped and he crumbles to the ground. Violence Fiend 
between attack once more, but is impaled by a blade suddenly summoned by the Darkness Devil. As his blood rains down, the Darkness Devil crouches down, looming over Aki as Angel Devil looks on. The Darkness Devil slowly turns to look at him. Angel Devil begins to bleed from his eyes, nose, and mouth before collapsing. Aki likewise begins to bleed before collapsing. Just then, Prince appears grabbing onto the Darkness Devil but is also mutilated. Communicating with Makima, the Spider Devil is ordered to summon her to hell. Makima emerges as the Darkness Devil and Makima face each other, both pointing. Makima's finger suddenly snaps as the various mouths on the Darkness Devil erupt with blood. Makima proceeds to walk over Toka's body. As Makima touches his head, Toka suddenly offers all of himself to the Hell Devil in return for sending them all back. At that moment, they are all suddenly transported back to the rooftop theme park Santa Claus was stationed at. Meanwhile, Santa Claus absorbs her remaining dolls, transforming into a tall, multi-armed creature. Holding Denji, Makima offers her blood, asking Denji to save her. Denji transforms, but Makima warns Denji that with Santa Claus consuming the Darkness Devil's flesh, no attacks in the dark will have any effect on her. The two begin to battle as Santa summons a swarm of dolls on Chainsaw Man. Elsewhere, Sushihagi looks on, clutching Quan Chi's head. Removing Quan Chi's eye patch and reaching inside the socket, she pulls out a long arrow-like blade before dropping the head into the swarm attacking Denji. Quan Chi transforms. The dolls are suddenly torn apart as Quan Chi appears revived in her crossbow devil hybrid form. Quan Chi agrees to fight alongside Denji in order to avenge her fallen harem. Quan Chi appears in front of Santa Claus, blasting her with powerful bolts. Just as quickly as she is torn apart, however, she heals herself. Looking up, Quan Chi realizes that night has fallen. As a result, the newfound darkness enhances Santa Claus's power even further. She moves forward and hits Denji towards a gas station, while grabbing the various bolts fired by Quan Chi out of the air. Quan Chi turns, seeing that Santa Claus has turned Long and Pink Sea's corpses into dolls and taken Sugi Hagi hostage. Unable to bring herself to fight them, Quan Chi is stabbed through the chest by the Pink Sea doll. Suddenly, Denji emerges, coating himself in gasoline. Rubbing his chainsaws together, he creates a spark, igniting himself on fire. Leaping towards Santa Claus, he begins to slice into her body, crying in agony. Santa Claus mocks Denji for his foolishness before healing herself instantly. Yet, Denji uses the chain of his chainsaws to be wrapped around Santa Claus's body. A pair of dolls in a car come speeding around the corner, slamming into Denji, causing a massive explosion. However, Denji emerges from the wreckage, cloaked entirely in flames, still pulling on the chain. In shock and horror, Santa Claus is hoisted into the air. Denji pulls her towards him before tearing through her body, ripping her body to pieces. As they begin to reform, Denji grabs the remains of the burning car, slamming them into her and causing a second explosion, ripping through her body and leaving her a smoldering husk. As Denji heals himself with the doll's blood, Santa Claus begins threatening him, but Denji arrogantly reminds her of his immortality until... He is suddenly decapitated by Quan Chi. Quan Chi asks Cosmos, who has been wandering around the city on her own throughout the majority of events, to use her power on Santa Claus. Within their own mind, Santa Claus suddenly awakens, standing inside an endless library. She sees Cosmo sitting at a nearby table. Good evening, Santa Claus. Cosmos, looking up, introduces herself as the Cosmos Fiend, before explaining the extent of her power. You are about to acquire total understanding of everything in the universe. A process so overwhelming that the user is forced into a semi-conscious state. Once you understand everything, you can only think of Halloween until you die. Santa Claus suddenly finds herself falling through the library. Her body is shown in the real world, crumbling to dust as it mutters the words Halloween over and over. Yoshida and Kishibe suddenly arrive as Quan Chi turns to fight them. Silently, the two put on blindfolds as Makima emerges from between them, holding a sword. Instantly, Quan Chi surrenders, offering Makima anything in return for sparing the lives of Cosmos and Sugihagi. Makima ignores their pleas before decapitating them. Elsewhere, a news anchor reports on the dolls stationed throughout the world who have all been locked into saying Halloween as a result of the Cosmos Fiend's power. Amongst them, Aldo is seen, also shuffling around and repeating Halloween with pain in his eyes. 
Denji awakes one morning, greeted by Aki. He comments on Aki's missing arm, one of which was able to be reattached after the attack of the Darkness Devil. Sadly, however, Angel Devil lost both arms, whilst Beam and Violence Fiend both died and Kobeni resigned. Aki informs Denji and Power of his plans to visit Hokkaido in order to visit his family grave. They insist on joining Aki as he reluctantly agrees. After arriving at his family grave, Aki begins to pray. Noting Denji's and Power's disappearance, he sees them eating rotten offerings left on the graves as Power vomits up the food before screaming that it was a plot by the Darkness Devil. Aki lets out an exasperated sigh. Later at the end, Aki is seen looking out the window at the snow. Denji awakes and joins him as Aki comments that he visits his family grave each year and is usually miserable. However, because of Power and Denji, the two of them manages to keep him distracted the entire time. The next day, back in Tokyo, Aki speaks with Kishibe and asks whether Division 4 could be removed from the Gun Devil Hunt, surprising him. Kishibe informs Aki that the mission will be classified, meaning Aki may never hear of its outcome unless directly involved. However, Aki still agrees. Asking why he changed his mind, Aki thinks back to seeing Denji and Powers unconscious and injured bodies in hell before responding, I got cold feet. Back at the Aki residence, as Denji and Aki wash dishes, they suddenly receive a phone call, summoning them to the bureau. Meeting with Makima, she informs the group that while she has taken Aki and the rest of Division 4 off of the Gun Devil mission, Denji and Power are still required to go. She asks Aki to leave if he does not intend to join them. Troubled, Aki asks to rejoin the mission to which Makima swiftly agrees. Having already begun the operation, Makima details the current status of the Gun Devil, explaining that it had already been defeated and confined. Denji and Aki respond with shock as Makima explains it was found dead shortly after its initial attack before being split up into fragments. Aki asks about the guns used previously against the gun devils only for Makima to reveal they were created by man. She elaborates, explaining that though there is an official global ban on firearms, each government secretly manufactures and circulates guns on the black market. In doing so, the remaining fragments of the gun devil are given more power. Hearing this, Aki realizes that in order to destroy the gun devil, the bureau will need to go against the wishes of of every global superpower. Makima agrees, calling the plan a kind of war. Outside, Denji and Power question Aki's despondence. He explains that even after they killed the Gun Devil, the body would merely be collected by the Japanese government, continuing the cycle of global hostilities whilst meaning the Gun Devil can never truly die. Suddenly, Aki is given a vision of the future by the Future Devil, reacting with sudden intense fear. That night alone, Aki summons the Future <laughs> Devil. Asking about the vision, the Future Devil explains that it is of a near and unavoidable future, one in which Aki and Power are killed by Denji, followed by the arrival of the devil that devils fear the most. The next day, Aki visits Angel Devil's hospital bed, having explained his future vision to him. He suggests asking Makima for advice as the two leave to find her. As they walk, Angel suggests Aki run away and leave his life behind in order to prevent his own death. Aki refuses, however, citing Denji, Power, and Makima as reasons to stay. Surprised by his mentioning of Makima, Angel comments on Aki's feelings for her. As the pair spot Makima, Aki also quietly begins to wonder why he likes her. Aki asks why she's there, to which he responds that she was simply waiting. Regardless, Aki explains his vision and desire to keep Denji and Power safe. Crying, Aki blames himself for his brother's death and promises to make any contract with any devil to protect them. Hearing this, Makima looks him in the eye before asking him to make a contract with her. Aki reacts with shock as Makima repeats herself, now commanding to accept the contract. As Angel Devil looks on, he slowly begins to remember the beach as the location he was first found. He gradually remembers a community of people who took him in and looked after him. He then remembers Makima arriving on the beach and asking to see his powers. Though he refused, she insisted, ordering him to use them. He then reawoke hours later, having absorbed the lives of everyone in the village. Snapping back to the present, Angel Devil reacts with horror as he sees Aki accept Makima's contract. Angel Devil begins to shout to Makima as she calmly comments on him regaining his memories. Using 10 years of life force to create a blade, Angel Devil lunges at Makima. However, she merely says the word, down, and Angel Devil crumples to the floor. She kneels next to him, ordering to give his all to her, to which he agrees. Apologizing to the the two of them, Makima explains that due to the spies within the bureau, the hunt for the gun devil was always a bluff plan to fail, hiding her ulterior plan. If we don't kill Makima now, the worst possible peace will descend upon humanity. 
In the United States, the president makes a contract with the gun devil, offering one year of the lifespan of all US citizens in return for killing Makima, revealing her to be the controlled devil. Back in Japan, in the midst of the church bells ringing and the choir singing, Makima incites the gun devil to show itself. On September 12, 1997, the gun devil appears in Japan, immediately killing every adult male and child within a 1500 meter area. As the full form of the gun devil is slowly revealed, a list of all of its victims is shown. Exactly four seconds after its first appearance, the gun devil pauses before locking its weapons onto Makima. One second later, Makima is shot through the head, marking her 29th recorded death. She instantly recovers, however, as her brain matter forms a halo around her head. The gun devil again pauses. As Makima stands, the body of Prince, Sawatari, Aki, Angel, Kuros, and Tendo are all shown attached to her. Summoning the combined power of all their devil contracts, a sudden hole opens up in the sky above the gun devil as a swarm of creatures with blades descend. Elsewhere, Denji hears a knock on the door and goes to answer it, assuming Aki is home. Denji is interrupted in opening the door by the phone suddenly ringing. On the other end is Makima, who briefly explains the gun devil's reappearance and informs Denji that a corpse reanimated by the devil is ringing the doorbell. Despite this call, both Denji and Power are skeptical, believing the person at the door to be Aki. As Denji approaches the door, he suddenly grows hesitant and tells Power to leave with Miyawi from the balcony. Denji, still uncertain, opens the door. Revealing the reanimated corpse of Aki, now controlled by the gun devil. Denji, not recognizing it, awkwardly asks whether the two must now fight. The view changes to Aki's perspective. In his mind, the two of them are children engaged in a snowball fight. However, each snowball thrown by Aki translates to a massively destructive gun blast in the real world, taking out entire city blocks each time. Denji is torn in half by a blast, commands power to flee as the two realize the creature is in fact Aki. As Aki leaps out of the building to attack power, Denji transforms and blocks his attack. As Denji begins to attack, Aki views this as Denji playfully throwing snowballs back at him. The battle escalates with every blast by Aki quickly leveling massive amounts of destruction in the surrounding area with many casualties. As Denji begs Aki to return to normal, Aki's fantasy self blocks out the plea and comments how for the first time in his life he's actually having fun. Denji is hit in the stomach by a blast, knocking him down. In the real world, Denji attempts to defend himself, but unwilling to hurt Aki, is forced to simply beg him to turn back. After being blasted and losing an arm and both legs, Denji lies crippled in the ruins of a building. Slowly, a crowd of onlookers gather around before they each give Denji blood and beg him to defeat Aki in order to save them. In Aki's fantasy, Denji begins throwing snowballs back. Though Aki is excited by this, he quickly notices Denji is crying. In order to stop this, Aki admits defeat. When he looks back, he notices Denji is gone, replaced by his younger brother Tayo. In the real world, it is revealed that in order to stop his onslaught, Denji stabbed Aki with his chainsaws, killing him. As Denji returns to his human form in shock, the future devil appears and laughs. <laughs> Aki Hayakawa, you died in the worst possible way for the chainsaw boy. <laughs> the final moments of Aki's life shows him in his fantasy, playing catch with his brother. One night, Denji goes out for a walk. He sits on a bench and immediately vomits. Feeling confused and unhappy since Aki's death, Makima appears. To cheer him up, she invites him over to her place. As Denji begins to relax, he thanks Makima as she begins to pet him. Makima then reminds Denji of his reward for defeating the gun devil, a wish. After considering for a moment, he states he wants to be treated as one of her dogs. He elaborates, explaining that he no longer wishes to think for himself, as he believes placing all of his decisions in Makima's hands will allow him to live a relaxed, guiltless life. Makima asks him if he is certain of this choice, with Denji responding yes. Suddenly, there is a knock at the door. Makima reveals she had invited Power over earlier. Slowly, Makima guides him to the front door and orders him to open it, so that she can kill Power. Denji pauses in sudden confusion and asks if she's joking. She ignores his hesitation and again orders him to calmly open the door. Before either have time to react, 
Denji looks on in shock, stunned silence as Makima smiles. Makima leads Denji back to her couch. Denji nervously asks her if he was in a dream as Makima leans over to rest her head on his lap. <laughs> she explains to Denji that his promise to Pochita to achieve a normal life was in fact a contract. Desiring to break the contract by making it so Denji could never enjoy a normal life, Makima explains she set about giving him everything he wanted before snatching it away. When Denji asks why, she responds that the time has come for you to atone for your sins. The next morning, Makima guides Denji outside into the corridor. In there, a number of demons, many of whom are Denji's deceased allies, kneel to them. Makima explains that they were all followers of the Chainsaw Devil, waiting for the Day of Resurrection. As she says this, the building is breached by a Devil Hunters group named the Anti-Makima Squad, led by Kashibe. Makima is gunned down as a number of Devil Hunters slit their throats in order to summon the Hell Devil, who they ask to kill Makima and banish her to Hell. Commanding Denji to save her, his intestines burst out of his chest and throttle him. As the Hunters slowly die outside the building, the Hell Devil emerges, now in a flaming centaur-like form. Denji pulls his cord and transforms into the Chainsaw Devil. In an instant, he leaps outside, slicing the Hell Devil into many clean-cut pieces. He stands tall in a darker, more muscular form with multiple arms and blades as blood and organs rain around him. Denji stands above the decapitated hell devil as one of the devil hunters gives blood to revive it. As he does, a door above them opens up as the hell devil's hand emerges and crushes Denji, transporting him to hell. From a distance, Makima watches, commenting on the outcome to Kishibe who has a gun pointed to her head. Makima notes that shooting her would be useless as she has a deal with the prime minister of Japan to transfer all damage taken by her to a random Japanese citizen. As she continues talking, scenes of the chainsaw devil tearing through various devils in hell are seen. She explains that within hell, the chainsaw man is known as the hero of hell. When it hears a cry for help, the chainsaw devil moves in, eviscerating every devil it faces, friend or foe. Makima then explains the ultimate power of the chainsaw devil. Any devil consumed by it has their names and therefore their entire being erased from existence. Kishibe asks Makima's intentions with the devil, reasoning that she wants to use its power to create a world without pain, war, or death. Suddenly, the door to hell reopens and the chainsaw devil emerges, showered in blood and organs. In an instant, Denji bursts through the wall and slices Makima to pieces before turning and looking to Kishibe. Without warning, Denji hears someone somewhere say the word save me and immediately leaves. After some time has passed, Denji arrives on a rooftop and surveying his surrounding, notices Makima nearby. Suddenly, Denji stands surrounded by seven devil hunters, all commenting on their love for Makima. Three of those Devil Hunters are revealed to be Katana Man, Reze, and Quan Chi. They each pledge their allegiance to Makima, as she elaborates that these hybrid devils are another type of creature that was erased by the Chainsaw Devil's power, yet somehow continue to exist. Makima commands her agents to attack. Each agent pulls out their weapon, transforming themselves into their hybrid forms, and lunges at Denji. As each makes contact with them, they are blown back by the force of him leaping forward, crashing through skyscrapers, slicing several of them. Reze then blasts through a building and grabs Denji, carrying him into the sky. Flipping mid-air, Denji decapitates Reze before he is impaled by a spear thrown by the spear hybrid. Makima seizes the opportunity and points at him, blasting him into the sky until he is pushed out of the atmosphere and into space. Reaching inside of himself, Denji rips out his own heart and flings it towards the ground. As his heart begins to burn up upon re-entry to the atmosphere, Denji's body begins to reform around it until it is fully formed. Still falling, Denji lunges out his chainsaws across the city, grappling onto Makima and the remaining devil hybrids. Hoisting them into the air, they each express a moment of shock before they too are torn apart by Denji's chainsaws. Comedically, we turn to Kobeni, who stands tired and sweating atop a Dance Dance Revolution machine before exclaiming happily that she got a perfect score. Her head turns to the side as she looks over at Chainsaw Man nervously. Kobeni stands confused, asking why she was dancing as Makima answered from above her, sitting on the roof above. Makima goes on to state that in total, she had been killed 26 times by Chainsaw Man. Yet, despite this, she claims the fear of Chainsaw Man had grown weaker. Kobeni looks over at Chainsaw Man as blood begins to leak from his body. A television is shown in the window of a city shop as a broadcaster states that Chainsaw Man had just defeated the gun devil. Images of people thrilled and overjoyed are displayed globally with people celebrating Chainsaw Man's name. As a result, more and more blood is shown pulling around Chainsaw Man with Makima stating that the humans cheering him on were eating away at him and contrasting the power given to him by all the devils who feared him. A chained angel appears floating up above Makima she uses his power stating usage 1000 years. A black circle appears in the air in front of Makima with three large humanoid 
humanoid figures appearing in the air around the growing circle. The faces of Kobeni and Chainsaw Man are shown bathed in light as Makima launches the spear at Kobeni. Chainsaw Man moves in front of Kobeni, pushing her away as the spear pierces through his torso. His blood is gushing out of his body, laying still and unmoving. Moving along, Power is shown sleeping on a mess of blood and guts as Pochita nudges her with his paw. Asking her to save Denji, he tells her that she wasn't truly dead as she was currently the blood that Denji had drank from her before and that if nothing was done, she would soon disappear. Pochita reveals that devils who eat the flesh of stronger devils will increase their strength and ask for her to eat him to revive as a devil. Makima moves to the ground where Chainsaw Man's body lay with around a dozen members of public safety lined up behind her. Chainsaw Man begins to get up on his hands and knees with blood continuing to spill from him as he points his head forwards, power suddenly ejecting from his mouth in the form of the blood fiend. Power laughs as she points towards Makima with blood weapons suddenly pushing out from within the bodies of her and the public safety members. However, as the barrage of weapons stops, Makima summons the zombie devil which appears behind her and turns the deceased members of public safety into zombies. As she is Escapes, a wounded, bleeding power crawls towards an alleyway, dragging Chainsaw Man along with her, with the zombie shown dead behind her. Power slowly moves closer to the dumpster, crawling inside. A human Denji and Power are shown in the dumpster together as Power happily hugs Denji and tells him that she was there to save him. She yells at Denji to shake off his depressive slump, despite knowing that when she dies, she wouldn't be herself anymore. Power suggests for Denji to find a new blood devil and befriend it to turn it back into her so that they can be buddies again. Then, Power forms a contract with Denji, giving him her blood and returns of him finding the blood devil again. Denji wakes up in the dumpster as he shouts for power. Kishibe calls to him, sitting down beside the dumpster as Denji turns to look at him. He asks if he was either Denji or Chainsaw Man and states that if he was truly Denji, then he would help give him some way to escape from Makima. Denji stands silent for a moment before showing him a peace sign. Later, Kishibe leads Denji and Kobeni into an underground safe house. He tells Denji that Makima would find and kill him if he attracted too much attention, especially in his hybrid form. Later in the night, Denji's attention is drawn to a nearby TV. He asks himself how he was going to kill Makima, knowing that she wasn't someone he could win against without a plan, and tries to think about some way he could defeat her. Days later, Denji in his hybrid form sits upon a cross in a graveyard. He spins up his chainsaws, facing Makima as she approaches him along with the hybrids and the many members of public safety. Denji cries out, yelling out a battle cry. He spins in the air, slicing multiple hybrids with his chainsaws. However, he quickly gets overwhelmed by the zombies jumping atop of him as he quickly becomes trapped beneath them. The flamethrower hybrid points his arms towards towards the pile before shooting it with his flame. Suddenly, two chains shoot out from the flaming mass before Denji launches himself forward, cutting the flamethrower hybrid in half as Quan Chi blocks him with her arms. Denji slices her, but several arrows pierces him as he decapitates her. A bloody Denji falls on his knees, then onto his back as Makima stands above him. Feeding him some of her blood, she tells him to wake up so she could kill him personally. Two dozen public safety members float up behind her, chains appearing and moving out from their torsos connected to Makima. She pulls on Denji's chest cord, greeting him before he immediately decapitates her. Yet, one of the chained public safety members' heads flies off as Makima's head returns to her body, pulled back by lines of her blood. The two unleash a flurry of attacks. As the battle wages, Makima punches a hole straight through Denji's torso. Grabbing onto a chunk of gut spilling out of him, she punches him again, tearing through his chest as both his arms are ripped off. Then, she fully rips Pochita from Denji's chest, blood spurting from his wounds as Makima stands above him, staring down at his motionless corpse. Looking over to Pochita, she tells him that he now belongs to her. Yet, several feet behind Makima, Denji slowly stands up from amongst a pile of corpses. He walks over to Makima, and as she notices him, takes out a chainsaw and slices her down the chest. Makima, now bleeding from her mouth and nose, asks how Denji was alive, to which Denji responds that she had actually been fighting Pochita the entire time. He continues, saying the chainsaw he cut her down with was made out of the blood he got from power, making it run amok inside her. He tells her that he's sorry before pointing the chainsaw at her. Days later, Kishibe pulls up to Denji's apartment, saying that he doesn't believe what Denji was about to do to Makima was going to work, and tells him not to die. The door to the apartment closes as Denji talks to himself and walks to the refrigerator, mumbling that he was hungry. He pulls a small box out of the fridge and says that even after everything that happened, he still liked Makima. He says that because of that, he shared the burden of her sins with her and asked himself how he would truly do that. He begins to cook and remembers since attacks had no effect on her, that that fact is what led him to realize how to beat her and become one with her. Denji finishes preparing his meal. He begins to take a bite of the rice as he notes that what he was tasting was what Makima tasted like.
In a park, Kashibe sits on a bench with Denji asking him how he managed to defeat Makima. Denji responds that he honestly didn't want to hurt Makima and that him eating Makima and becoming one with her wasn't an attack, but rather an act of love, negating the specific terms of Makima's contract. Suddenly, a little girl bites Denji's finger who shared Makima's target-like eyes. Kashibe tells Denji the young girl wasn't Makima, but the reborn control devil and no memories of Makima were in her. Continuing, he says the young girl will become just like Makima if left by the Japanese government. Therefore, Kishibe entrusts the girl, Nayata, and Denji's care as the two walk off together. At some point in the future, a large, deformed devil rampages through the streets of Tokyo as several dozen citizens run from it. Standing against the crowd, Denji stands, wearing a school uniform as he faces the devil and pulls down on his chest cord. Chainsaw Man Part 1 The Public Safety Yard concludes here, but if you want to see where the story goes in Part 2, you're going to want to click on this video right here.